wait, wait. Okay. So, uh, as I was saying, now that we've had our meal, guys, if you're going to be around here, be quiet because we're doing yeah. a history thing. If you're if, not listening to the history, uh, go, then, somewhere yeah, go somewhere else. Wait, wait. If you're staying here, be quiet. Yeah, because it disrupts it for us who are trying to hear. Just wait. Just wait. And, and there's plenty of other places to go, to go hang out if you don't want to. You want to hear some? this, but if you, if you are, here's some people want to hear. So, um, so as I'm saying, I'm Gavin Whitecloud, and I am giving a little bit of a history for people about uh, things leading up to current events. Uh, we were at the Third Age, um, where we had, so I sort of told you about um, just getting to the part where Broden, who is a vampire, <coughs> um, had sort of, uh, was about to um, be discovered. We were in a part where Gortek Etek was attacking Selendil. And um, at the same time, hobbits were disappearing in Selendil, the city, Elven City. See. And people didn't pay a lot of attention to it that much. They really thought it was the dwarves mostly, that the dwarves were just abducting them and taking them off into Svoldland and using them for slave labor. Um, but they were starting to disappear in a certain area, and so people, few people went down into the sewers to find out what was doing it, and they encountered this, um, this person, who later they discovered was named Broden, who was a vampire, and at the time he was um, not a very powerful vampire in, in and of, at least his levels, he was not very powerful. Um, however, it was theorized that even at that time, he was an, he was an elder vampire. Like, he, he was, there are different types of vampires, and I've done some research into this, that um, there are different types of vampires. The kind of vampires that we commonly encounter would not be considered elder vampires. Um, they would be considered you know, common uh, or noble vampires. But, um, but an elder vampire has a power over other vampires and also an ability to create other true vampires. Um, and he was not very powerful at the time as far as his, his level abilities. He was, um, as far as they could tell, he was only, he wasn't even a guildmaster yet. Um, but that was from what he appeared to be. And they, they, two of these people went down and they fought him in, this, in, the, in the area, but they could not, in fact, kill him. They instead stole some of his things and left. Um, they later went down again to try to stop him, um, but same kind of thing happened. They went down to fight him, couldn't really succeed, and then retreated and left. Why? Why could they? Well, he had he had a lot of allies. One of the things he also he was supposedly using one of the Lich King swords, which are these swords that allow undead give you great control over undead and allow you to allow undead to reanimate themselves just by their spirits kind of returning to you, and then they immediately. Reform, so he could replenish his undead very, very fast. So these heroes must have been pretty powerful. They were very powerful heroes. One of them was known as a um, particular mage called Syrian, who bought, b battled him um, uh, at least on three individual accounts. Battled Broden directly. Um, um, another one of the heroes who fought him um, was uh, named Xander, who actually will feature in our history a little bit more. And another was. Um, uh, Wadsworth, or uh, Bubbles, as he as he um, <laughs> later became made him to be known. Uh, he actually was a, um, uh, somewhat of a teacher here at, at, this, at our school for some sometimes, um, and a, 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 a notable nature mage. Uh, in any case, these individuals um, uh, were fighting and kept trying to defeat uh, Roden before he could become too powerful. But what happened, unfortunately, was that um, they were making some last attempts to try and, and uh, kill him. Um, uh, another uh, elf, um, a hero elf, um, accompanied Syrian on a last attempt to try and take him out. Um, and a hobbit, who was uh, one of the um, last hobbit protectors, um, went down to try to destroy Groden at this time, and um, and they all they failed. They didn't die. They just ended up pulling out and leaving before they they because they could tell they were going to die. Which um, hobbit was that? Um, he well, he didn't speak. He was he didn't say anything. Um, he was fairly quiet individual, um, and um, he was pretty much kept to himself. As far as we know, he was a he was a thief and a very skilled one. But uh, not a whole lot known about him. Did you um, know his name? Um, no. He, um, since he didn't talk much, the name that he usually went by is not commonly referred. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but uh, these individuals went down, and, and it, um, as far as my sources go, Syrian actually stole um, a journal of Gordon and took it. Now, uh, Syrian has interesting history. Some say he's still alive. He is an elf. And um, he actually, at one point, 
uh, leading up to this, um, impersonated uh, one of the um, members of the Wizard Trade Order. Oh. And uh, was actually uh, he he um, murdered the he went to go see when the wizard trade order um, murdered him and then uh, imprisoned his soul and stuck him in the closet and then made himself look like the person and then basically just sat down in his desk and continued the business he was doing and for quite some time nobody really caught on that he wasn't the person that he just knocked off. Uh, eventually, though, he could tell that they were they were checking him out. His, his stories weren't adding up. Things that he was doing weren't weren't totally coming out clean and so he some of the higher ups were coming to check on him and that's when all of this stuff broke out well um so Gortok Hitak shows up on one side from the inside Broden is rising to power and uh, a few heroes make a last stand um, at, at, uh, at the dark city and um at the same time we were we here in Hostar are being attacked by Dagbyak they are attacking in, uh, in a battle called, if you, you can read about it, called the Battle of Ant Island, um, which it was interesting in that it, it pointed to something very interesting that is often lost to history, which is that most of the Dagdioth troops were being paid in large amounts of silver. And the huge amount, many of these orcs were paying, being paid in huge amounts of silver, which I, they, we theorized was being paid to them because they thought of the amounts not the value. There was all, I think had all these thousands of silver as opposed to just a hundred gold. Or, you know. And that they were using that as a, as a means to motivate them. Most people just saw it as, oh, they're tricking me, all these orcs into battling them. These were Dagdiot orcs. What nobody paid attention to and I've done research on is that, what kind of silver was it? Um, it was actually all freshly minted serpentine silver. Um, silver that's from Desnor. Uh, huge amounts of it. Well, that's bad because Desnor is where the Wizard's Trade Order is located. And all this huge amounts of silver that was freshly minted and delivered to all of these orcish Dagdioth troops, that would suggest that the Wizard's Trade Order and Dagdioth was actually paying, I mean, the Wizard's Trade Order and Desnor was actually paying Dagdioth to attack Ostor. Um, now we are, we were the only independent at the time. We were the only ones who were no longer a member. And so my theory is that they were actually paying Dagdioth to try to force us into being attacked. And they said they couldn't help us because we were not members. We asked them, could you come and help us and protect us? No, I'm sorry, you're not a member of the Trader. We cannot give you aid. If you join, then we can protect you. So they were using Dagioth to attack us, to get us to to force us to want to join, so that they would have control over us, and then we, you know, they would do what they wanted. So, <coughs> so that's another one of the list of many war crimes that I would say that the Wizard Trade Order has, has been involved in. So, Broden comes out of the sewers at this time, just as Gortok is attacking. A few heroes make a last stand in the city, but they fail. Uh, this is when King Fiandrin dies. The, uh, the last real elf king in the line. He <laughs> tries to stop Gortok Etak. He turns into a white dragon at this point, and when he's battling him, but he ends up being killed by Gortok Etak. Anyway, but takes Gortok Etak out with him. Actually, Gortok Etak kills himself in order to go into a rage strong enough to kill the white dragon. <clears throat> so, um, Frandor's body is never found. It washes into the ocean. Um, and Gortok Etak's body is taken away by his followers. It, it may later appears that he was somewhat resurrected into another form, into a golem form later, but that wasn't known for, the, for a while. He was taken away, and what is left with this huge battle between all of the elven troops, all of Gortok Etak's troops, all these dead bodies and spirits, and who's there to take them all but Broden, who comes out of the sewers and goes, Oh my gosh, two huge armies. I think I'll just animate them all and make them all my army. Two armies. And that's the, called the birth of the Dark City. Um, and the Dark City was a city of vampires. It wasn't just vampires, it was lots and lots of undead. Did and they end up well, No. It's only the vampires usually were, and even, even the true vampires that Broden was able to create, they were free-willed, but since they're created by an elder vampire, they, they have a certain... only so much free will you can have there. You have free will, but you're still subservient to another being. Not to total free will. Um, <clears throat> so the Dark City is created this time and many dark heroes, heroes who are already evil, um, either joined of their own volition to become vampires, or uh, were, were just absorbed in that battle. They were already in that battle, and they were absorbed in and turned into um, to vampires. Um, um, so no. the Dark City, when Selendil, or so it was called Selendil at Necronef, is what it was called, 
um, persisted for quite a while, and there are many battles where people tried to destroy it, tried to destroy um, uh, the Dark City, but the Dark City was, had a history of being very, very crafty. They always seemed to be planning one step ahead of whatever it was that people were planning to do to them. And the theory around that has to do with that people had a tendency to talk about what their plans were. And when you have a bunch of vampires who can charm people, it was pretty much assumed that anybody, even the people in this inn right now, could be charmed individuals that we don't know about who are all listening in on our conversations and then would go off and tell you know, whoever it is they're trying to figure it out. So that was the danger, was that every time people would start talking about, let's go attack the Dark City and this is how we'll do it, there was always someone who maybe even everybody thought was on their, their side where they were totally trusted them, but they didn't know they were charmed. And that person would go and tell other sources who would then tell what was going on, and they'd be one step ahead of them. Um, so many, many attempts were made. There was the Battle of the Mirror Sky, where certain um, protesters in, As in uh, Astingrad who were forbidden from involving themselves in the war, actually, um, uh, they, they still involved themselves. They pretended to be in class, but they were, they were sort of bilocating themselves and, and, and being two places at the same time. Not quite. They were only partially in class. Every other second, they would disappear and be <laughs> at the battle, and then they'd reappear in class so that nobody could notice that they were leaving. And so they would be sort of be seen to be like sitting in the in the sky, writing on nothing, and then they'd be back in class at their desk writing, and then they'd be back in the sky writing. And, and they they managed to create a um, to reflect part of the sky um, and make it reflective and reflect sunlight in underneath the shroud of the dark city. So the dark city had a, a cloud over at all, at all times to keep the vampires from being destroyed by um, sunlight. Sunlight uh, hurts vampires. So, um, so the sunlight was reflected, and that was a very um, famous battle. The catastrophe of the orb is also a famous battle of the Third Age, where um, the Nalorian, who is now dead, um, who is the elf king at the time, discovered an orb that allowed him to destroy undead everywhere around him. He he took it from a dead vampire. He stole it from uh, Cyclops, the first of the of the um, what were called the Caraquas. They were the dark hero, dark hero vampires. He took it from him and then discovered that it had this incredible ability to destroy undead. And of course, everyone assumed that that this vampire had it because he was going to take it to be destroyed, and he, that's why he was taking it away. But n very few people thought of no, it's been planted on him so that it will fall into into his hands, and but people were like, no, no, but we killed this, this character. Why would they let this one character die to give him this thing? Well, that's because of the potential for destruction. They were willing to let that vampire be permanently destroyed to get this thing in the hands of the king. Because once he was using it, it had a very deeply hidden flaw that when, once, it was, once it was used and this flaw triggered, um, everyone in that person's party's items would be unforged, destroyed. Well, he was the leader. Yeah, included the items. He was the leader of, of several armies at the time. And so he went into battle with several armies. And um, and then as soon as he started the battle, it its flaw triggered and everyone's items were unforged. And that, of course, bolstered uh, Dark City's um, uh, forces again. Now, it was only because of these three unicorns that show up um, that the film that film the archive actually finally falls. Now, how those how the unicorns were actually created is very is, or how, how they were discovered is very interesting, and and I'm gonna sort of skip a little bit. and I want to go back to it, which is a bit about this um, something called a spell wheel. There's not a lot known about a, this spell wheel uh, thing, but there were several heroes involved in all of this who were investigating something called um, or, or there's there's stories that they were finding pieces of this something called a spell wheel. And it's sort of theorized now that that was. That was Grizzard Emdahl's spell wheel that he made that blew up the Grey Isle. Now, I can't tell you what my sources are, but um, but I can say that I have it from somebody who was there. <clears throat> that there was a there at one point there was a spell wheel, and that was very similar at least. We can't say it was the exact one, but there there was a spell wheel in possession of certain individuals at one time that looked a lot like this one. At least we assume. And that that it had a, it had an ability that had to be arranged in a certain way, and there were certain uh, certain pieces of um, that you had to move around, etc. But there were also keys to it. It had to be turned on. The person wouldn't tell me all the specifics. But I'm for sure they're afraid that if they did, that some of the people might find out what those things are and then misuse the thing. Of course, the thing is gone. They did tell me that, that the thing itself was apparently taken by dragon and is no longer um, in the possession of those who had it originally. 
um, and they didn't expect it to, ever, to be seeing it anytime soon. Um, because at the time, when this spell wheel was sort of trying to be used, dragons started to be attracted to the place where they were using it um, like crazy. And there were dragons all over the place at the time. Now, I'm not going to say where it was the thing was used, and I'm not going to say who it was who was using it, because it was considered an item of mass, uh, Elder Church of Mass Destruction, which could make people be arrested and taken to the Wizards Trade Order, who I think should be arrested for their war crimes. But since I can't arrest them myself, I will say that... I'm not going to say who it was. Do we know what kind of dragon? What kind of dragons? Color. Several gold, two iron, um, two red, a green, and uh, I think two mithril. A green or the green? Oh, a green or the green? Oh, she, she, she's referring to the green dragon. There is a green dragon that is known to, to call Hostoritz home. And uh, it's freak it, 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 it appears throughout the Third Age. It was pre it apparently warned everyone that the catastrophe of the orb was going to happen. In fact, some people went supposedly and asked the Green Dragon to join them in this fight against the Dark City. And it said, I will not join with you. I will not be part of your group. And they said, why not? And it apparently said, if I ally with you and then something happens to you that affects all of your party, what would happen to me? And they said, oh, I understand. And then they <coughs> left. But they still I went along with the battle. <laughs> they still ignored his <laughs> So uh, apparently the, 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 um, the, the green dragon knew to a degree what was going on. Um, so there are supposedly this, this spell wheel thing generated a lot of mana. And, and it was part of it was that the arrangement of it, as I understand it anyway, it was the arrangement of it that determined the spell. It basically was a spell, but in a concrete form, and it had mana that it could generate for its own casting, and then it had words that you could arrange, just like a Elder Sorcery spell. I'm not a mage myself. I'm only a historian. It had to do with the material itself, the stones themselves. They generated mana. Not that I know of, no. But they were actually, these, these stones were crafted. They were shaped into different shapes. Um, recently, some people have come and encountered with some spell stones, and I and I can't say, I cannot confirm or deny if they're related to this at all. Can you, because can that you would be suggesting that they're all the first mass destruction, which I do not wish to suggest. Can you say whether uh, it's probable? I think it's probable Bobo, that they exactly. are a similar material. Oh, okay. As what these things were made of. But I don't think they're the actual same thing. Wait, Anybody seen Zach? The spell wheel was created in the Grey Isles by Grizzly Dumbbell, and it blew up the Grey Isles, and they're all still haunted because of them. These Isles are all still haunted. Now, <laughs> there, there are these, these other set of stones. I'd like to talk to you at some point after this mm -hmm. and become one of your sources. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, thank you. In any case, going on with the history. So, um, the spell wheel, I, I, I do have from somebody that, it, that they had, they did discover it again after it blew up the Grey Isles, and they did apparently use it again for some purpose, which was not explained. And I can't say who it was or what they did with it, but they did use it. Um, and it did work, at least they think. Um, uh, somebody said, he also have from some sources that, you know, that it, they, that it was taken away, like I said, by dragons, and they didn't expect to see it again. Um, now, um, at this time, some unicorns started to show up. Now, it may have been, it may be related to this thing, but, uh, but I don't think so, because this happens much later. That these unicorns show up, and I don't know all the details of that. I know some of I've, I've done a lot of research and hinted into things. I know that there was a group of people who were who were going off into the east, and they were trying to find some things. And then it was some of those same people who came back and ended up being involved in finding the unicorns. But you know, heroes are heroes. They involve themselves in a lot of great things. I don't know if those two things are connected. Like, did the fact that they went out into the east is the reason why they ended up finding the unicorns? Or is it because they just are heroes? They tend to involve themselves in big things. Suffice it to say that they figured out some way to um, to find these unicorns and release them from wherever they were or you know, get them into this world because they weren't in existence as far as any history we have before this time. And those unicorns ended up destroying the Dark City. And well, they just sort of converged on it, just sort of started walking towards it, <laughs> and it just it, it, there was a huge spell being cast by them. A certain type of elder sorcery, which nobody had uh, heard of at that time, called arcane. Some people, and um, and they were going to cast this, and then just as they were about to cast it, the wizard trade order attempted to counter their spell, to keep it from working. Once again, this is why I think the wizard trade order should be um, should be uh, arrested for crimes. Because I think I think because, and I, I told, and I told you guys a bit about the Pearl Mallet for a group of of um, people from the south that have an ability yeah. to destroy undead. And the Wizard Trade Order has been has been creating genocide on those people 
for years. We've tried, found evidence about this, and Hoster was involved in that. Some people I've even talked to have, have, have told me about that, that, that they, have, they were going down and just annihilating these people. Not, not a lot of people necessarily know that, but it is recorded history that they were going around and, and creating genocide on a people who have an ability to destroy a dead just by being around them. Now, if you consider that there is a necromancer on, it was a trade order. In fact, that's one-fifth of the whole order. I mean, they're all also necromancers. So, the, the uh, you know, I would suspect that if you look at the fact that Desnor is paying, or the wizard trade order was paying Dagdioth to attack us, Ostor, and then they had the Dark City, and... They were trying to, they were trying to, you know, we were trying, something was trying to destroy it. I sort of suspect that that the Wizards Trade Order has a vested interest in having something that we want to kill. Because I would suspect that once the Wizards Trade Order runs out of things that we're obsessed with trying to destroy, we might notice that they're a big threat and have been causing all these problems. We might start looking into the fact that they're causing genocide to people down here. We might start noticing that they are taking over portals that allow transportation to places into the east. Or they, we might start noticing that they still haven't been arrested for war crimes uh, that they've, they've been doing through ages and ages. And as long as they can keep some sort of distraction or really dangerous thing going, they, it's in their interest to keep that distraction because you this? well I've noticed it but I'm a historian not many people pay a lot of attention to history you know it's sort of like I want to go out and kill something I go kill it I'll get some magic items and I'll go home that's that's their life and that's not my life I'm not a wizard I'm not a warrior I'm just a historian so I'm into the history now and luckily I'm on an independent nation so I can actually say these things because if I was somewhere else and I was talking about things and wrestling for war crimes I mean that's treason I could be I would be around to slam so I wouldn't go repeating this stuff <laughs> you know, on the mainland. <coughs> Even if you're a citizen of Pastor, you could still be arrested there. Yeah. For all I know, I might be arrested myself. I mean, I shouldn't be. I'm an independent nation. I can say what I want, right? But people disappear. Yeah. So, so back to the history. Um, the Fourth Age was really pretty sad. Um, the Sander, I mentioned before, um, he had been appointed to Gramion Hold as his holding, and he conspired to try to destroy the Dark City. This is before the uh, unicorns destroyed it. He was trying. He was trying to destroy Svodlin's power because he really didn't like Svodlin. He thought that they were charging too much for all their items, <laughs> and so he was going to get back at them. And they had kind of invaded and were starting to log these areas, and he also didn't like that they were logging. And so he uh, he designed a secret meeting. With uh, with the Dark City, Dagdioth, um, Selendil, um, Ian Ion, Hostor, Temnor, um, basically everybody uh, except for uh, Dag uh, Desnor, and he he got he got em emissaries from all those places and brought them all to a secret location, and he he made a very poor choice of where to bring them. Rather than meeting them all in his stronghold where he could control everything, he met them just outside the Dark City. In an area that was very, um, well, because he didn't want people to know that he was there. up to. So he met them all just outside the Dark City and brought an emissary from each place. Well, he, his plan was, his plan was to have Dagdoth invade and take over, have, have everybody invade and free the Hobbit slaves, which is a noble purpose, but not well thought out. He wanted to free the Hobbit slave labor, so he, he was going to have everybody attack Svodlin, and then, you know, free the Hobbit slaves. But he invited Daggy off in the Dark City to do it. Well, discussions were made and plans were made. I don't know all the details. I, I've talked to a few people who actually survived, so I know a little bit about what happened. But, but he, eventually there were some plans passed around of scrolls that were about the plagues that were going to be used by Daggy off. And everybody read the scrolls and said, oh, I see you're going to use this spell that's going to cause plagues and said okay and they said we're also going to use this spell and they passed out a bunch of scrolls and everybody read the scroll and it said with the sorcery of uh, storm I can I control your mind oh. and so everyone just mind controlled been mind controlled by the scrolls that he, they just handed out I told you the dark city is very crafty well suddenly everybody in the whole group had just been mind controlled except for the one elf because it was, actually wasn't designed to do that designed to, to work on elves so the one elf that was a representative from here was tracked down and killed well not killed actually turned into an orc um, it's interesting. Um, it, was it was turned into an orc and later tried to warn Nalorian about, the, about what had happened. And he ended up getting killed. There's a little known history that he was he's speaking elven and there's an account of an elf, an orc, who runs up speaking perfect elven, trying to warn 
uh, um, Nalorian about what's about to happen because he was at that meeting, but he gets killed by the royal guard and hauled away because he was an orc and, and ends up you know, dying because uh, they, they said he attacked the king. Once again, I think there's a lot more behind that. I don't think well, you just kill some random orc who runs up to attack the king, speaking perfect elven. Somebody was behind that. Somebody didn't want him to find out, but it almost, he almost got out. Anyway, all these people remind the children, what does the Dark City do? They say, I want all of you guys to go back and pretend like the plan's still on. Go back and we're still going to attack Svelden, but now you're working for me and now you report to me and you tell me everything that's going to happen and when the time is right, you're going to do what I want you to do. So once again, they all attack to free the Hobbit slaves and what, lo and behold, Dad Yoth just takes the whole area for themselves, using minions from everywhere else and they just take over the this is the time that Temer reveals they've been working on drakes and they use drakes to attack the whole area. Anyway, that's that's back in the in the fourth age. So the, the unicorns destroy the city, uh, and then the dark city moves to uh, up into Svodland. It becomes uh, in Crotogros. And um, <coughs> at this point, all of us started to discover that the wizard's trade order is horrible. Evil. And and they all become rebel republics and we're all fighting against it. Some of you remember this time when when uh, Lord Stonehammer actually decided oh, yes. to become a member of the rebel republics and then he got arrested and taken away and there was another king there who, who decided to I mean, another lord there yeah. who was wearing a Morganti broadsword on his back, and then there was a rebellion, and you rescued Lord Stonehammer and said, No, we're reinstating you because we don't like this guy. That was the Wizard's Trade Order trying to control your area. Now, um, yeah, so. Definitely. Oh. Yeah. So, that all broke apart. Now, what changed was that there was a new king. Lord, uh, Lord Smalltrees ended up ended up stepping down as the king in Serpentine, and um, and Lord Opamai took over. Now, when he moved the he moved the, the throne to Estorok, and um, and he sort of reinstated. He tried to rebuild the Wizard's Trade Order and reunify everyone. And because it was a different king. And he moved, as a symbol, he moved it back here. And because it was a different king, he reunified everybody. Now, some people said, why didn't he just destroy the wizard traders right then? If he's such a good king, why doesn't he just destroy the wizard trade order and then go? The issue, I think, and I don't really know, I'm not the man. But the issue, I would say, is that it has to do with established rule. He just took over the throne as a new king after thousands, hundreds of years as a rule of, the, of Lord Smalltree. And his whole family, and now is a whole new family taking over. If he, and in that same time, destroys the Wizard Trade Order, he would have had civil war and chaos across the entire region. And so, I think what he was thinking was he would use the Wizard Trade Order to try to create stability, and because everyone's familiar with it, and use it to create stability, and then try to work it from the inside and change it and make it into something good. He's already started to do that by putting Laura Whitelocks on the council. Mm -hmm. I think that was a good move. Of course, it pissed off a lot of people because, well, <laughs> there's two hobbits. well, there's two hobbits, and they're supposed to be an elf. And Eliana Starlight was not happy about an elf not being appointed. I think the elf that she wanted to be appointed was a friend of hers. And I think she just expected that that was going to happen. And when it didn't, I think she was not too happy. <laughs> Who's the other hobbit? Um, Hamill Whitehand. Uh, what's his background? What's his background? <laughs> Is a bad background? He's not from Hostel. Uh, yeah, that doesn't necessarily guarantee his evilness. Mm -mm. It doesn't. Now, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Don't want to go there. So, ultimately, we end up now with, um... Um... The Hero Malik and the, and the Sea Elven Navy came to help with the, um... Rebel oh, Republic God. movement. But the Sea Elven Navy got destroyed and annihilated by Wizard Trader. Once again, genocide. genocide. All of them killed. They used Elder Sorcery, Mass Destruction, and Weather Magic to destroy them, which is supposedly illegal. It's but not for the Wizard's Trade Order to use. It's going against their it's own It's illegal role. for other people to use. It's going they, against their own rules. They also created these, this is way back when, in the 30s, they created seeds that were um, genetically um, you know, modified with Elder Sorcery to create tr plants that were resistant to any sort of attack from anything. Well, this, these seeds cross-pollinated with the ants in a rivalry. Oh, oh. And then the, now the ants, now the ants are, have become, you know, immune to every kind of attack because that's what they wanted their crops to do. They wanted their crops to be immune to any kind of attack. That's they didn't think it would cross-pollinate cross with ants, so now they have when ants. The, they also programmed the plants to be very aggressive, so they wanted them to fight out other weeds. 
So now the ants are very aggressive and want to kill other weeds. God, they God, view God, all of that. people that like weeds. So that's what happened so in Oriri? That was happening in Oriri. Now some people said they might, that might have happened in other places here too. We have a disease with ants here in Trangor. Wait, wait, wait. And some of you guys found a seed, I think. Oh, yeah. That A seed that was of the same kind of plant that... that, yeah. that, that that uh, the Dagioth was using at the time. And they were trying to try to plant an ant seed that was going to ha have the same resistance and then would pollinate with all the other ants. And they thought maybe they were trying to try to take it over here and get it to pollinate Hostor. In Hostor, because there was a lot of ants here too. Now we do have an ant disease here, but this, <laughs> this ant disease is different. This ant disease resembles more of something that um, we, I think it comes from the, the being called the, um, the bone tree, which is one of the... Uh, the one of the... the um, Lufkons. There's the Forbalaka, and there's um, the Devouring Light, which was which was eaten by the Stone Dragon, and there was this thing called the Bone Tree. And um, I suppose there's also a fourth one, but uh, I don't know a lot about it. Oh, you know about that thing, huh? Well, then you know more about it than I do, but yeah, I guess that's the thing. Anyway, the Bone Tree is a skeletal tree ant. Thing. But it has it, it, the, the infection. It infects other things, and when it infects another tree or tree oh, ant, the thing, the thing grows sound. mouths all no, over it, oh, and all the mouths oh, are always like now. trying oh, to eat everything. That, yeah, and oh. and you, you fought a few of them, I think. Some of you, at least on some quest, I heard about. Um, anyway, so getting to current history. Um, what's important, I think, at this point, is to understand what happens next is that something happened, and I don't know all the details of it, I discussed some of some of you guys uh, last time we were meeting, that, that something happened, interesting, there was a civil war that happened between the the, the Dark City when it was in Krongros and Dagdia. They started fighting each other. Now why that happened, I cannot say, because they'd always been buddies up to this point. Um, and and no oh, one took advantage of it. The, the, the Wizard Trader didn't go, we should attack them while they're fighting each other. No, no. <laughs> Well, this is before. This is before that, actually. Um, yeah, before that, they, they were fighting each other, trying to kill each other, and 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 many people were like, "Why don't we just go attack them?" Like, you know, nobody went out and said, "Let's go attack them while they're fighting each other." It was like, "Great, they're killing each other." Well, they'll solve. They'll they'll, they'll annihilate each other, and we'll just stand all our own business because they they'll just eventually kill each other. And they didn't, though. What sort of happened was they reached a stalemate when apparently the Dark City actually won the battle against Dagyop and surrounded um, the Brooding Keep. Oh no, sorry, uh, Mythloid Oiders, um, and was, had some ritual set up, and we don't know what it was designed to do, but it sort of theorized that they were going to destroy the three. Um, that they knew how to destroy the three, and they were going to destroy them. the three. The three that are theorized that, that reunified with these unicorns to create. Oh. They were going to destroy those three. The three demons. The three demons. Yes, they were going to destroy them. Yes, they were. Well, that would have been. That, now we understand that that would have been bad. If, if we, because the sisters are apparently two sides. Of so if if they if they had succeeded. Then there would never have been the 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 three the the sisters. And because the sisters would have been destroyed. Happens, yeah, so it would have destroyed balance. the unicorns. Yeah. Wouldn't now, have, like, destroyed all sentient races? I wonder who perhaps it would have. Destroyed hmm? their own emotions? Well, perhaps we don't know. But in any case, something happened. There was uh, that, that apparently there was something that the Stark said he wanted really really badly, or at least Broden did, because he was he's the leader and he got them all motivated, and brought them all over here and, and surrounded them, and then apparently whatever it was 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 given to him, we think, and then it ran away. That's really the confusing part. Because we know that there's accounts that he was given the thing. What thing? The, 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 well, I don't know what it was. But that's what I can't... That, I, if it was a thing, how did it run away? I don't know. No, I'm suspecting maybe it was a being. Was it a creature? It was like a hostage that they had and he wanted it back. I don't know. It might have been a, it might have been a hostage or it might have been an animated object. It may have been. In any case, it ran away and they were having the, the, the hardest time finding the thing. It took them years to track the thing down. It was all over the map. And they were, now apparently they had some way to locate it. And I think they were using these Pathfinder items we discussed before where they could locate some. And if they didn't have those Pathfinder items, I don't think they would ever have found it. But they managed to corner it, capture it, and take it back. And it's very shortly after that, after they get the thing back, whatever it is, and they take it there, within, you know, like just a few months of them getting it back there, suddenly something like the Dark City implodes. And like, there is, it just seems like it's been eaten from the inside out. People go to investigate it, there was one thing left, um, a, a, a certain, I think it was a dwarf called Adder Snatcher. No, he's a human. I can't remember. I don't really, he, went, he went there with a group of people, and there was like one vampire left, and it was sort of, had like flaming wings. 
Oh, and it had and a Morgoth dagger. It had a Morgoth dagger. dagger. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know all the accounts of it, but I, I recall I it saying something that. that I'm all that's left, is what it said. And yeah, yeah, I was crazy. there. And it was totally crazy. <laughs> yeah. And when they, when they yeah, searched the point. place, they found crazy. lots of, of, of Morganti cut right. parts <laughs> and, um, and, and signs of a huge yeah, battle, but not a lot of little yeah. bodies necessarily, but just lots of pieces of things all over the place. And like a huge war had happened uh, inside the place, and whatever it was seemed to be able to have just destroyed them, except for this one that was said on the left. When they, the, when they did finally kill the thing, they didn't kill Morganti. They just Don't worry about killed it, it and it died. It PD immediately, and it and it didn't like even it didn't even like. You know, often it'll take a while for something to PD because it's it's not um, you know you, you, those of us who normally we have to wait for death to come. Death came immediately for this thing, and it sort of theorized that it had died so many times before that it was like its soul was so heavy that just this one tiniest death was all that took to just have the thing. And it was so like cra- it was so crazy already. It didn't really want to. Right. Well, that, that was a long that was a long that was a long time ago, and Dadiel took over the area that they that, 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 that our city had. And it was sort of theorized that maybe Dadiel was behind it. Like they said, we don't need them anymore. They're dangerous, and maybe they just killed them before they could get because they had attacked them before. And now that they had what they were wanting, what's to keep them from coming around and attacking them again? Right. So now that they've got their hostage thing, are they just going to turn on us? And they know how to destroy us. So preemptive strike. Let's kill them. Um, so. So they're dead. Dagioth takes over this area, and then apparently Dagioth and the three had figured out some way to kill these unicorns without destroying themselves. Because we discovered that these the unicorns and the three were actually like two paths. Yeah. And up until that point, anything they did to the one, they did to themselves, which they didn't know. Um, I heard there's a famous battle, which I only have a few accounts of, where this was happening, where someone was actually in the presence of the unicorns fighting the three. It's a legend, but I don't, I don't know if it's actually ever happened. Yeah. And that every time that they would, they would like the, the the unicorn's hoof like got cut off, and then very shortly after, like the unicorn cut the hand off of one of the one of the beings, and it ended up them all of the attacks being like it wasn't immediate. It was like faded, like delayed reaction. It was delayed to a degree, but it was like fate caused it to happen. If you can imagine, like, not like I cut off my hand and your hand immediately disappears, but yes. I cut off your hand and then in the series, for, series of this battle I end up killing off, cutting off your hand. And isn't Sorry. that interesting that fate managed and then to balance that exactly? And they... Yeah, that happened. And there was a one that was grievously wounded and another grievously wounded. So, um, so, um, we don't know exactly what happened here, but we know that Dijon takes over here and they start invading. They, they came and created this darkness zone here, which was created by one of the, um, one of the roof gods, we think, maybe. We don't know how it was created, but, but it's sort of theorized that's what it is, because otherwise, how did they get the thing? They also created something called the Skull Demon they brought down here. It had, it had a no magic zone that moved along. We found out those were actually haunts that it was creating, and these haunts that were no magic haunts. We have not seen the no magic haunts in quite some time. That disturbs me. I'm a historian, you know. These kind of things stick around. Where do no magic haunts go? If the magic doesn't work on them. Do they PD? If they're haunts, haunts usually stick around until they're solved. Did someone solve them all? And if so, how did they do that? How would we not know? The scroll demon was conceded, right? Yeah, it's being held in random. No, remember it's being held. Stone dragon is watching over it. The skull stone dragon is... No, because they were around for years after that. Now they're kind of... They're very rare now. You occasionally run into them, but we don't run into them that much. Why? I'm interested in that. Um, so anyway, that's my history lesson for now. There's a lot more history, but I can get into more. We can do a lot more questions, but we'll have to save them for later because it is time for Night Quests. <laughs> <laughs>